Welcome to my kitchen and welcome to Craig, who's going to be my guest today and my guinea pig. We are going to prepare a heartwarming dish today for the cool season. Um, a nice toasty beef goulash with egg noodles. It'll be easy to make, a little bit of prep work required, not too bad, and I promise you'll love it. So, oh, because I don't just uh, steal your time today, I'm going to feed you a little bit too, so enjoy that while we work away. Thank you. A little bit of um, goat cheese with herbs, mango pearls, and prosciutto with cheese. We'll start very easy with preparing some basic vegetables. I have some celery here, some carrots, um, an onion, and some peppers, bell peppers. All we're going to need for this dish is a nice cut of beef, some bacon, um, salt, pepper, paprika, and I'm using what's called a, a bouquet garni. There's two ways to get this, or three actually. It's just dried herbs, or usually oregano and thyme, and a bit of bay leaf. You also can find it uh, in little cheesecloth pouches, so you don't have to uh, fish for little leaves left over in your dish after. This you can just leave in while you're cooking and take it out later. It adds phenomenal aroma. Bit of garlic, a bit of tomato paste, pearl onions, very yummy, and mushrooms, and of course a little bit of butter. So you start by just chopping your vegetables. You don't have to worry too, too much about how you're cutting them as long as they're relatively small pieces because your meat will have to cook for two and a half, three hours. I think, uh, Craig, you've had beef goulash before, right? Yes, I have. Have you cooked it before? No. Oh, there you go. Now we'll uh, show you how to do it. Some carrots. And some celery. That will add phenomenal flavor to your gravy. We're going to be sauteing those vegetables in a bit. I'm not adding as much onion as I usually would into a goulash because we're going to make these pearl onions the superstar of the dish. So just maybe a half an onion. And your bell peppers. You can choose any color. There's orange peppers, there's green peppers, uh, red peppers. Anything looks nice. You'll still see a little bit of that color in the final dish. So just feel free to use any one you like. I like red and yellow because it goes really well with the green and orange of the carrot. So we'll give that a quick rinse. And again, don't concern yourself about cutting it in gorgeous pieces as long as they're all about the same size, a little larger than your carrots and uh, celery because they cook a lot faster and you don't want them to fall apart. There we go. And we're almost there. Okay. These will all go in a mix of olive oil and butter in a nice hot pan and make the base for your gravy together with the meat. Second one you want to prepare is your bacon. Yes, there's bacon and butter in this, but it's worth it, trust me. Um, little, little chunks. If you find bacon all in one piece rather than sliced, which is not always easy, uh, you can also do something what the French call lardons, and it's just bacon sticks. Um, the bacon is a little um, less soft. It's a, a drier kind of bacon, so look for that in a store, and, and you might be lucky and find it. The beef, just pick the cut you like. Um, now, usually we cut stewing beef in tiny little pieces. Now, we've come to like it a little better when there's more substance to the pieces. So I'm not going to go too small with this, but again, that's personal preference. You cut your excess fat off, fat off to a degree. 
You want a little bit less because it'll all melt away in the cooking process anyway. But this is the size pieces that we like. So you still need to use your fork and knife while you're eating. But it becomes a, a different look, different feel to it. I've cheated a little bit and made ahead, peeled the um, pearl onions, cleaned the mushrooms. So all we've got left to do is put a little bit of seasoning on the meat and then we can almost start cooking. Now you can do salt and pepper, always. Um, you can, if you like it, add a little bit of paprika, and I do, because I love paprika. Not too much, because you don't want it to burn when you're, when you're sautéing your meat, when you're browning your meat. So that should be good. You mix that around a little bit. And we're all set to go. I will start cooking. Looks great so far. So we'll start with our bacon. We'll go and get it nice and crispy in the pan. Let's move over to the oven. Um, we'll start with a little bit of olive oil. If you want to use, uh, if you have a cast iron pan, it'll help uh, make your meats and vegetables nice and crisp over uh, medium high heat. And the advantage is too that you can, once we've, we've prepared all the components, you can just reassemble it all into that same pot and off in the oven it goes. One little uh, mix of better butter and olive oil mushrooms in here. Onions in here. And we want to watch both high heat under the mushrooms, medium high heat under the under the onions. All you're going to want on there is a little bit of salt. Once your bacon is all nice and almost crisp, we're going to fish it out, put it aside in a little bowl. I like cast iron pans a lot because they distribute the heat evenly. You can use larger pots and they get actually hot in the bottom all over. <coughs> Disadvantage is they're quite heavy. And when you clean them, uh, after you scrub four or five of them and you're lifting, you can tell the difference on the weight. So these guys want to be just a little brown. And then what we're going to do is give them some sugar and a little bit of beef broth that I've prepared here. You want to use hot broth. I wouldn't ever want to put anything cold on a, on a hot dish. So here we go, we'll grab a little bit of sugar, just for beef broth, I would say not quite covering your onions. Everything's better with bacon, isn't it? It is. <laughs> you can also try, I've done that before, you can um, do a pancetta instead of a, a, just a regular pork bacon. That's the Italian version and I quite like that flavor. Or as I said earlier, see if you can buy a double smoked or just a smoked bacon in, in one piece and you can do little strips about one centimeter wide. I'm sure you're gonna like that too. Everything adds its own little unique flavor so you figure out whatever you like best you keep using in the future. The onions, about 35, 40 minutes to soften. By that time, all the broth will be used up. So you gotta watch when the liquid goes down. So let them burn, take them out and they're just gonna be ready to go. Now we'll take this bacon out and we'll start browning our meat. You can use a slotted spoon for this or do what I do and then you drain the excess fat out of your bowl a little later on. Now it's important 
that you're browning your meat in one layer. Don't overfill the pan, it will not go crispy. And if you overfill this pan, it'll go soggy and juicy and it's not gonna brown. So be careful, do it in two steps or do it with two different pans, whatever you prefer. Now these mushrooms look just about perfect and put them in a little bowl to be added to the goulash when we put it in the oven. So look at your meat, that's what you want. Nice and crispy and brown, not burned. Make sure you wash it. So what inspired you to pick the colors and the layout of this kitchen? Well, it was very easy in the beginning. The kitchen in the house uh, many years ago was very tiny. And I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. We all do. My kids, um, we all love cooking. So we needed more space and I was thinking about what would I like. Now you might know I'm a France fan, so Provence is my, my passion really. And I was wondering if I can bring a little bit of that home, uh, looking for pieces, looking for color ideas and what have you. And I came across, you won't believe this, a pepper mill. And I looked at it and I knew this is going to be my kitchen. This kitchen is going to be built around this pepper mill. And that's exactly what we did. So everything that came together bit by bit was thinking with, with the thought of that pepper mill, the color of it, the shape of it, the, um, the fact that it, it's a pencil, really. Um, it's wood. I like natural wood. I like pencils, believe it or not. Um, and the colors are just perfect to me. So last, in our same pot, go our chopped vegetables. We'll give them a little bit of a sauté. So these can just drizzle away for a little while longer. Our onions are still happy in there. Here are our pearl onions, and you can tell they turned out just perfectly, nicely caramelized. This is what you want. You don't want to stir a lot because you're going to um, loosen the skin around the onions, they're going to fall apart, they're quite tender now. So just leave that alone for one little second. We're going to now put our meat and all the other goodies back into the pan. Now this is the best part because once you're done that, you're done. The meat goes back in, a little bit of flour across that meat and we'll stir that in nicely. What that'll do is later on, when it's happily simmering away in your oven, the flour will bind the juices together so it turns into a nice, velvety, delicious gravy. Give that a bit of a stir, and you can see lots of aroma left in the bottom of the pan. So we'll deglaze that with a beef broth and you want it just about almost covered. That should do. Depends on how much gravy you're gonna like in the end. And then everything else we prepped ahead of time, those yummy caramelized onions, they will go in. The mushrooms and the bacon that we prepared earlier, that'll go in. Now there's only a couple of things left to add. One is your tomato. Just a couple of tablespoons will do. You don't want it to taste tomato-ish, but it'll give it some depth. Nice flavor for gravies. And your bouquet garni, those nicely dried Provençal herbs that will help the sauce to taste when you close your eyes. You might be just in France for a little while. We're putting in um, a nice fruity bit of red wine. Will sure not hurt the flavor of the sauce. And I've discovered I'm adding just a touch of a red port. We've all come to love that. You'll taste the difference, it'll be yummy. So there you go. This is it. And the lid goes on and your work is done. And off we go, we move all this into the oven. I've set it, preheated it at about 355 Fahrenheit. Not too hot because this is gonna stay in there for 
two hours, two and a half, three, you're gonna check your meat, we're gonna figure out when it's nice and tender and when it's ready to go. So that's it for now. All we've got left to do is uh, cook our pasta to go with it. I'm getting hungry, are you? Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. I just, my mouth has been watering the whole time. Good, mine too. Okay, so let's get these egg noodles going so you and I can have a taster. Sounds good. It won't take long. We've got our water boiling. And here we go. I know if you just put salt in the water with the noodles, I usually use oil or butter. What's, uh, what's the difference? I see that a lot and, and that might work just fine. I've never really seen a need for it. I've tried it. Uh, it depends on what you use your pasta and how quickly you use it. Um, here we're going to just put a tiny bit of butter on the pasta when it comes out. We'll melt some flakes on it so that'll keep it from sticking. Um, I really don't see a huge advantage, but there's nothing wrong with doing that at all. It's personal preference. Hmm. So it won't be long and we're going to be back to taste the goulash with the beautiful egg noodles. Our egg noodles. We're going to drain those. And I like just to keep them warm for a little bit. Put them back in the pot. Everything's better with butter, yes? Just a few flakes. And no. it will melt right into those. Are you hungry yet? Oh, my mouth has been watering the whole time. Did you leave any room? You know what, this was delicious, but Esther, for your cooking, I always leave a lot of room. Oh, <laughs> that's too nice. We're going to look at uh, how that goulash is going. Smell? Oh, yes. Now here's the magic after two and a half hours of simmering away, getting all these vegetables, uh, the meat, the bacon, the mushrooms simmering and, and creating this beautiful flavor. While this is keeping hot, let's just do a little bit of parsley. Let's have some healthy topping on top of that. We'll chop just a bit of parsley up. I have Italian parsley here. You can do curly parsley. You can do um, chives. I like chives a lot too. Or in the summer when the garden is going, the um, onion shoots the spring onions, beautiful, on, on top of a goulash. And uh, I like just to put a little bit of sour cream on top as well. This is really a combination. This dish has uh, evolved from cooking the, the famous Julia Child version of um, Boeuf Bourguignon or my grandma's goulash, which was very simple and plain compared to Julia Child's French version. And then the, um, the kind of wines and the port that we tried out. Um, I'm a fan of bell peppers in gravies because they add phenomenally nice little flavor to it. So I would say this came about from four or five recipes a long time ago and eventually this is how we do our goulash. So the noodles are ready. See they don't stick. We'll uh, put some right in here. And let's see what that looks like when you have a peek. Yes. Are you sure? Oh, really? I'm very sure. <laughs> oh, I can't show you. Oh. <laughs> it's too nice. We can smell it though. There we go. You see how that's all one togetherness now, one happy flavor, one happy look. So all these vegetables, onions, meats have absorbed the spices. Um, and we're going to get to try it. Now let's see. I think we're just going to put some of this in the middle. Make that look as pretty as possible. Put a little bit of noodles around the corners, the edges. Are you sure you want to eat? I'm uh, very sure. Good. Just a little 
Now I see what you're sc scooping out the sour cream. The spoon's got an odd shape. It does, doesn't it? Where did, uh, do you where know did what that... this is? No, I do not know. Neither did I. I found this um, in France at a, and, um, a flea market, antique market, and I love the old, heavy French silver. And I had to ask the lady, what, what is this? This is odd. And when I tell you, you'll go like I did. Oh, yeah, right. It's a baby spoon. It's to learn how to eat. I'll have to wash that off and show you because I find it so intriguing. We, we lose some of those good ideas from a long time ago. See how that's kind of narrow in the front? Yes. So, of course, when little people learn to eat, all they can do is grab something like this, which hopefully with age we don't do anymore, um, as we learn to do better. But doesn't it make sense how this is narrow and it goes into your mouth without going all over the place? So it just guides the food into yeah. the baby's mouth. Turn. Very interesting. Isn't that one cool piece? I loved it. I had to have that. And it comes in handy. Okay, here we go. A little bit of parsley. Does that look good to you? Looks fantastic. Yes? Okay. I'm, I have to admit, I'm looking forward to it now as well. You see all these big chunks of meat. Some have stayed together and some have just broken down a little bit. That's why I leave my meat quite chunky because it'll never, never stay all in one piece if you want it nice and tender. I can see the caramelized onions in here. I'm looking forward to those. Baby spoon sour cream. What a fantastic spoon. I, I love it. And a little bit of plus. You kind of have some fun while you're working, you know? It's beautiful, I find, when you, when you find useful things yes. that you actually use every day, and they're cute and pretty, and, and they're special. I love that. That's what the flea markets do for me. So here we go. Why don't I let you try first? Thank you. So everybody's watching you now, Craig. Go for it. Oh, I know this looks like so it. good. Oh, and I got an onion here. Oh, the caramelized onions, yeah, they um, they add to the dish, I'm sure. It's worth the extra little step, prepping them separately in, in your pan and then adding them rather than frying your onion as you usually would when you sear your meat. Wow. You like it. That is fantastic. I don't want to stop. Well, keep going. Oh, you try I'm yours. I'm going to try mine too because I want to know if it's as good as I hope it is. It's better. So It's better. The beauty of this too is that you can make it ahead. And like we said earlier, heat it up. It doesn't get worse, it gets better. That works. Fantastic. Me. And with our busy lives, and we can put this in a slow cooker while we're working away. You could probably do that too, once everything is assembled. I'm talking with my mouth full. You could probably try that, yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is comfort food. This is coming home from a nice long walk in the cold and being really, really hungry. I bet that'll do the trick. So we had fun. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for coming. Well, Esther, thank you for having me. It was great. Thank you for watching, and I hope you had as much fun as we did. We'll see you soon.